Our scripture this morning comes from the book of Luke, chapter 12, verses 1 to 12. When a large number of people had gathered together so that they trod on one another, Jesus began to say to his disciples, first of all, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. For there is nothing that is covered that will not be uncovered, and hidden that will not be known. For whatever you have said in the darkness will be heard in the light, and what you have whispered in the ears in inner chambers will be preached on housetops. I say to you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, and after that have nothing more they can do. But I will show you of whom to be afraid, of him who, after he is killed, has the power to throw into hell. Yes, I say to you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? And yet not one of them is lost before God. But so far as you are concerned, even the hairs on your head are, are all numbered. Therefore fear not, because you are much more important than many sparrows. I say to you, whoever will acknowledge me before men, the Son of Man will also acknowledge him before the angels of God. But he who denies me before men, I will deny before the angels of God. And whoever pays, says a word against the Son of Man will not be forgiven. But he who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. When they bring you to the synagogues before the leaders and authorities, do not worry how you will answer or what you will say, for the Holy Spirit will teach you at that very hour what you ought to say. And now Dr. Lyle will give us our sermon lesson for this morning. I have been um, scratching around in my brain, and I know that there's a little lesson sermon in here somewhere. I don't, um, I may not have all the pieces put together, but I'm sure by the time I'm done here, you'll get the general idea of what I'm talking about. So um, I drove out of here the other day and was headed that direction, and just from the very beginning of moving down the street, I said, no, man, you know, you've got to go the other way. This is, do not go this direction. I mean, that's what was going on in my brain. So I turned around and went the other direction and had a perfectly peaceful, calm drive and arrived at my destination safely and without event. So there, you have to listen to that voice within. Now I know, see I know you're going, well how do you know the other direction would be any different, right? Well because I was told to turn around, see? And of course I couldn't possibly know unless I went that way. But it's finally dawned upon me that you don't need to ignore that voice on any kind of regular basis. Because like our little story about that donkey that gets out of the well, it's going to come back and bite you. It may take a little while, but it's going to come back and bite you. And the reason why this became paramount <clears throat> in my brain, I'm going to go back to this. You know, we, we have this thing about listening to the still small voice. And what happens is, is that voice goes on. And, and I know there's other voices too. And I know... You know, the questions always to ask is, how do you know which voice it is that you're talking to? But the deal is, is that voice has a distinctive quality about it. It does. And you know what it is when it's right. And you know how many times you ignore it. And, and I have ignored it too many times in my life. And what happens is, is that if you keep ignoring advice or warning, they stop giving you advice. That's the way it is. Now the last time that that voice came to me was back in September. <laughs> okay? September, October, November, December. 
And it took from September to November for that thing to come and bite me in the butt. Okay? And I knew at the time. And so cognizant of it at the time that this was probably a mistake that I was allowing to go down. So cognizant of it I was that I set up safeguards. Human safeguards. Anyway, by the end of November, the little warning of the voice had come full circle and it flowered and blossomed and bloomed. And I'm stuck with a mess on my hands because I didn't listen at the time. So the very next day when I was driving that direction and that voice said, this is the wrong direction. Stop, turn around and go the other way. I went about 10 feet further and I stopped and I turned around. So I don't know what was in that direction, but you know what? I don't wanna know what was in that direction. <laughs> you know, because I know that something was in that direction that was going to come back and create a problem. And I know that you think I don't have any proof. But I have all of those times that I have ignored that voice and it come back and get me. One month, two months, three months later, whatever it took. I have all of those times. And so, at this point in time, I have chosen to heed the voices or the warnings, because I'm tired. I've gotten old enough to know that the other way somehow doesn't work. So now I have to sit and listen to that. And I admit in the past I have periodically, uh, you know, listened and not listened, depending on my mood at the time. But with this last incident was enough for me to realize that we do have with us um, our own inner voice, our own inner protection uh, that comes from a source within us that knows far more than we consciously are aware of. And periodically it pokes its little nose through and consciously alerts us of a message that we need to follow. And I'm just here saying that we should follow those little messages, regardless of how silly it seems. I mean, it obviously seems much easier just to drive down the block and go around the corner and go out the back way, instead of turning around in the street and going the other way. And I obviously had chosen to do that. And as I say, I will never know what was out that other direction. But I do know that the path that I ended up going was just perfectly clear and smooth. Now what better result could I have than that? So it's my thought to impart to you all that when you have that little voice within you, whatever you want to call it, that you start paying attention to it and not just shuck it aside. Because as we shuck it aside, we are going to find it not talking to us until we get the message. Until we've made enough mistakes. And hopefully, in our lives, we want to cut down on the mistakes. We are a composite being. There is more to us than the physical aspects. We have our physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, and spirit comes to us in many ways, and we need to pay attention and listen to spirit and be guided by spirit. So in your meditations or whatever you do throughout this week, my thought is, is to affirm that you will be guided by spirit, allow yourself open to be guided by spirit, and to follow the inclinations of spirit.